it was just before quarantine began that I was told my mother was dying. Not from the coronavirus, thank God. But from natural causes. And that I would probably have just over 24 hours, a little more, to see her before she died. And even though I knew I would probably be stuck in upstate New York until the quarantine was over, I had to go. I owed so much to her all those years. And especially when I was a kid, you know, going up to Connecticut to see her mother and uh, those long summers, uh, 50 aside football matches, uh, blackberry picking. I, I'll never forget it. So I had to go to see her for the last time before she died. Now, I had to make the long journey from Rhode Island, where I'm from, to uh, close, but not too close, you know, Buffalo, where uh, my mother was dying. You know, most old people, when they, uh, they, they go to warmer places, you know, uh, when they get to be her age, Florida. But mom never does things like other folks or makes things easy. <sighs> anyway, I literally ran to my car and set off just like that. Because, you know, even though everyone else in America, hell, the world was going into quarantine, I had to put my foot down and just go. Eat up those smiles. I drove to Providence, Albany, obviously uh, skirting around NYC. Sure to be the craziest been since 9-11. Uh, going back even further since the Cuban Missile Crisis emptied out Times Square. <laughs> I just kept driving and driving. And when the cops stopped me, as several did, I simply explained to them that I'm on, a, I'm on a mission of mercy to try and see my mother before she dies. Well, they were all sympathetic. <laughs> Hell, one cop said if it was up to him, he'd be an outrider for me. You know, like those guys who uh, escort the president's car. <laughs> Well, he couldn't anyway, because of course he had to stay there, make sure nobody was going over the speed limit anyway, even though there was nobody out there on the road for crying out loud. Anyway, seven hours later, three cops and two uh, gas station stops later, I pulled into Buffalo. It was late and I nearly crashed into the hospice and I was in such a rush. I ran in, and one of the nuns who ran the place that I'd met before, she came over to me and she said, I, uh, I think you better hurry up, son. I, I think uh, that they're starting to give it the last rites. So I literally ran down the corridor to my mom's room, and I burst in. And she was laying motionless on the bed. And uh, my other relatives were there. Uh, some of them, like me, had uh, made the journey from other parts of New England before the quarantine started. And the priest, he's making a sign of the cross in the air above her. And I literally cried out, oh no, I'm too late. And I threw myself down on the bed at her feet and I sobbed my eyes out. And as I lay there, in despair, I heard it. The softest, most delicate, fat, imaginable. Well, it took me a moment to realize what was going on. But when I did, I looked up to see everyone, including the priest, laughing the head off. <laughs> But I didn't care. My mom was alive and I still got to see her alive before she died and say goodbye. You know, so many didn't get that chance. I'm glad I took mine.
even though I'm stuck here in Buffalo. But there could be worse places to be in lockdown, especially since my uncle owns a bar, and he always says that he'd rather drink the beer before it goes bad rather than pour it down the toilet. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to be toasting the bomb long and hard until this quarantine is over anyway. <laughs> uh, cheers, Mom. Here's to you.